have a neighbor, turn to your neighbor, tell you remember, happy October month. Mwambi, you are a remnant by the grace of God. Bwana asifiwe. My name is Beatrice. For those who are our visitors, and I'm born again, this morning I have the joy of the Lord. I'm a daughter in this house, and I want to appreciate our bishop in absentia, and our pastor, our mom, Pastor Alice, and the pastoral team in this place for giving me this chance that I can stand here and share the oracles of God. This morning, we want to hear the word of God in the remaining minutes. And I want to encourage my heart as I encourage your heart because I know we are all in the journey of faith. And in this journey, what we need is the word of God. Having the word of God in the morning, at noon time, and in the evening. What will make us stand friends in these last days? It is the word of God and the promises of God because they are yea and him. And he knew you and I will be here. He knew that you were going to cross over to the month of October. Therefore, he has a word for us. I want to, uh, my topic this morning is God knows our sorrows. God knows our sorrows. And we are going to read it from the book of Exodus chapter number three. Chapter number three. Our key verse is verse number seven. Let's go there straight so that we can save on time. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Father, in Jesus' name, we commit your word to you, to your Father. When you come, I divide it into small parts that each one of us will have his peace or her peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Come down to our level, Jehovah, and speak to us, dear Lord, upon our level in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you and I bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is a story of the children of Israel. If I, if I can bring you on board. Somebody told us that we normally say the Bible says there's somebody who have never read the Bible. So let's not assume that you all know about this story. It's about the children of Israel when they were in captivity or when they were in, in Egypt. From verse 1 to verse number 6, it talks about Moses and the burning bush. Moses saw a bush when he was taking care of the sheep of his father-in-law. He saw the burning bush and he went to see what was happening. Because this burning bush was not consumed. It was not a burning, but it was not consumed. He thought, curiosity, he went to see what was happening. But before he reached there, he heard a voice. And the voice said, remove your shoes because where you're standing is a holy ground. And that is what Moses did. And when the Lord spoke to him, these are the words that the Lord spoke to Moses. That I have surely seen, in the King, New, in the King James Version says, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. There's no beauty, friends, like the Lord saying, He has surely seen and heard and know what you are going through. I may know, but because me, I'm limited, I have no help. But the Lord said, I have surely seen, not only seen, you know, surely is an emphasis. I have surely seen the affliction of my people. Which are in it. So, Lord, our father knew, or God knew, there were some people, there were his people in Egypt. He didn't say, I have seen what is happening in Egypt, but he singled out that I've surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I want to submit to you this morning that you're not a stranger before the Lord. He knows what you are going through, He has heard what you are going through. And you don't go to verse 8, but verse 8, he gives a remedy. You'll go and read at your own time. In the, ampli in the amplified version, the Bible says, the Lord said, I have in fact, another emphasis, I have in fact seen the affliction or the suffering of the dissolution. If you are here, you are suffering. The Lord in fact have seen. If you are here in, in dissolution, the Lord in fact have seen. Affliction of my people, not our people, but he singles out our my people who are in Egypt. What is your Egypt this morning? Wherever you are in that Egypt, 
the Lord can see you. The Lord can hear you. And the Lord know what you are going through. And he says, I have heard their cry. You know all of us, especially the mothers, when many babies are crying outside, you can single out the cry of your baby because of the connection. Therefore, this morning, the Lord is saying, I have seen and I have heard. He has seen the affliction. He has heard the cry of his people. And he knows. You are not supposed to tell him. He knows what you are going through. So the Amplified said, I have seen the affliction and the suffering of my people who are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry because of their taskmaster. Who is your taskmaster this morning? That thing you are going through is your taskmaster. Name it and the Lord is going to see you through. For he knows your pain and your suffering. You are under a taskmaster, it is not funny. Anybody under a taskmaster, anybody who is unwell, anybody who is in desolation, it is not funny. You need a remedy and you need some help. And you know man's nature, it yearns for sympathy. When you are in pain, you go to see a doctor. Are we together? When you are in luck, you go to see, look for provision. Because man's nature, the way we've been wired, we have been wired for sympathy. And that's why God came for our rescue. He sent Jesus Christ to come and be everything that we desire in this world. Is it comfort? Jesus will comfort you. Is it counsel? Jesus will counsel you. Is it in pain? He's going to heal you. Because he knew that we've been wired in a way that you cannot live alone. You need somebody to sympathize with you. Let's try and break down this sentence into three parts. Number one, how cheering is the announcement of the text? How cheering? We all know about the cheering squad. Now this morning, let's ask ourselves, how cheering is the announcement of the text? You know, the, the cheering part is that God said, I have seen and I have heard and I have only three things. I have seen, I have heard, and I know. A God who is blind cannot see. A God who is deaf cannot hear. A God who is not able, he cannot know. Therefore, we serve a God who hears, who sees, and who knows. You may miss anything else, but you are God. It doesn't matter what you are going through. The Bible says that, that in his appointed time, he makes everything beautiful. Keep on telling him. Keep on waiting for him. Keep hope alive, friends, because God is coming to make a difference. So the first part is how cheering is the announcement of the text. It is not a mere man who says this, but God, the creator and the Lord of life and death, is the one who says, I have heard, I have seen, and I know. The redeemer, the comforter, and the healer. He says, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. He was not concerned about the Egyptians. He was concerned about his people. Are you a child of God this morning? He's concerned about what you are going through. God's people were in great distress in Egypt. They were ordered to throw their baby boys into the river as Pharaoh was seeking to weaken the nation. You know how close a mother is. How close a father is especially a father to a baby boy. I be together fathers in the house. Amen. Because you say, after me, I have a legacy. And Pharaoh knew if he can wipe out all the boy child, he has weakened the nation of Israel. But God came. God came. He heard the cry. He saw the affliction. I mean, knew he has a plan because of his children. They had become slaves to the Egyptians, but they were under and they were under a heavy whip. Imagine you're already under objection. You are already a slave. And there's a heavy whip. But all this God saw. And he knew he has a solution. They were crying out to God because of their taskmasters. Things were not good. You don't scream when things are good. But as we are ladies, do you scream when you brought an ice cream? Where do you scream? when things are not good. When you open your house and meet a man, a man with a panga, do you greet him? 
Munafanya nini? Una scream. So these people were screaming because of what they were going through. They were under the subjection of the taskmasters. But the Lord knew. You're only screaming for now because I am come. I'm, I am coming to bring a difference in your lives. When we remember that, that the speaker is the omnipresent and omniscient God, we remember that his knowledge is something more than man's knowledge. A man can hear and he can do nothing because he's limited. But when God hears, there must be a difference. He sees the beginning and the end of an event at once. He knows all about our sorrows. When they come, how they come, why they come. He knows everything what you are going through this morning. Before you are conceived in your mother's womb, he knew this day. And he knew what you are going through. And he knew that he's going to carry you through because it's not about your power. It's about him. And you know, when you are going through a hard time, friends, you don't walk with the Lord. The Lord carries you. Because you know, Niki Mwachiria Hapa, I'm going to lose you. So what he does, he walks, but he carries you. May the Lord carry us through. There's now a song that everybody is singing. Vile kuko kubaya, vile economy kubaya. My prayer is, just connect with the economy of heaven. If you don't want to lose your salvation, times that you are living, you don't want to sing the song everybody is singing, sing a song that people know their God are singing. Daniel said that them that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do what? Exploits. You cannot do exploits when you don't have a testimony. Guard your testimony. Above everything else, friends, guard your testimony. Yes, things are bad. Don't confess they are bad. Just say, the just shall live by work on your faith. If there's time to be worked on your faith, it is because things are not going to be better. It is your testimony that's going to get better. Work on your testimony. Work on your faith. Let people say ni kubaya, unasema ni kuzuri kwa sababu alie uhai na alie niumba, anajua lazima ni kule. He knows you must pay your rent. Wewe si ndege, atutaka ajui ya miti. Lazima ukoe kwa nyumba. Iyo nyumba siyo yako, iko na mwenyewe. And the landlord has an expectation. Nusema tisaka hapa, sisa lipa nyumba kwa sabu ni miyokoka. Utatupuwa nje na utafungwa jela. But change your language. Change your language. Say, I know. Like Joe, my redeemer liveth. And he knows I must eat, I must drink, I must dress. Are we together? Look, angalia, angalia ngombe. Allow me to say this. Angalia ngombe. Munajua ngombe. Ngombe ni kau. Let's you don't know. Yeah, ngombe ni kau. Ngombe, does it have a dress? Does it dress? It dress. Allow me to correct you. Nane meona uchi ya ngombe? Hakuna. The Lord made a tail. To cover What? the nakedness of the cow. If he can do that to a cow, what about you? What about you? But what, what is happening now is that you are singing everybody starts a song and then you enter in. Unakuwa, but imagine some people are singing songs and you know si kubaya, but because you want to fit in that category, ndio muhurumiwe, iyo sympathy, you want that sympathy, you start singing that song. Please stand out. Stand out and say, for me, I know my Redeemer lives. And he knows I am living. He's going to supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. It raises our thoughts of God's consideration. If you remember who these people were. These were people called by the name of Jehovah. And what was their sorrows? Because of their identity in God, he knew these are my God. Living in Egypt for some time, the Lord had no choice other than to hear and to see and to act. Slavery is a horrible thing because somebody who is in slavery has no right. Go to Kamiti prison. Go to Langata prison. People that are, they are in prison, they have no right. Those who are in condemn in, 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 in committee, at a jua he jua free in a tuchoma if you see back on a look for somewhere to, sh to sh for shelter. When I want to end the injured kwa jua for some minutes and then they are when I to andani. You have no right. So the children of Israel had no right. 
Because they were slaves. Because when you, 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 are, you are in slavery, you have no right, you are subject to another person and seek to control your life completely. Mbaka hewa, unapimiwa hewa. Mbaka jua, freedom. If you are in slavery, you have no freedom. They were God's people. And in man's eyes, but in man's eyes, sorry, they were a poor band of slaves toiling day and night under hard task masters. All this the Lord saw, but he knew my day is coming. Keep on calling unto me, keep on telling me, but my day is coming. Their sorrows were those which poverty had and hard labor bring. Sorrows. What is bringing you sorrow this morning? Is it sickness? Is it lack? Is it that marriage? Is that child? The Lord is saying, I am here. I have heard, I have seen, and I'm coming to bring a remedy. As God knew his people's sorrows then, so he knows ours now. However, infinitely, various may be, however, great. Everybody has a night. Your night may take years. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 30, verse number 5, that weeping may tarry for a night, but joy comes in the morning. That night may be years to you. That night may be months to you. That night may be weeks to you. And that night may be days to you. And that may be last night, only one night. The Bible says that joy comes in the morning. Hold on. Keep hope alive because joy is coming. You look at your ears and say, the Lord has forgotten. You are not forgotten. And I think I said, I'm not forgotten. God knows my name. People may see, nika mungu alikusahau. People that are old, our great-grandmothers, they used to say, mungu alikusahau. Nimea muka tena mungu alikusahau. They want to go home. But for us who are living, you are not forgotten. God knows your name. No matter what you are going through now, God knows your name. If you knew the children of Israel, God knows your name. The Lord knows by experience the toil, the fatigue, the pain, the weeping, and the anxiety, the dissolution. Whatever you find your name there, whatever you, wherever you find yourself in, the Lord is saying, I have not forgotten you. Just keep hope alive. You only see me if you keep hope alive. Number two, lesson number two. Lessons of comfort. If our God knows our sorrows thus intimately, we may go and lay the whole before him, assured of his sympathy. Friends, yes, I don't know what you're going through. You have gone to your friends. One month is over. Another month is over. They have come to a point. They, have, they, they want to give up on you. But I'll tell you this morning, lay yourself in the sympathy of the Lord. He'll never leave you. He'll never be tired of you. But human beings, you find me when I'm in luck and telling me that you are in luck, who can help the other one? The Bible says that two blind men cannot walk together. They cannot walk together because I am blind, you are blind. But go to the source because he knows you need good health, you need provision, whatever you want. The Lord is saying, just come to me. Just simple word as he told Peter. He told Peter, come. He didn't say, I am coming. He told Peter, come. The Lord is saying, just come to me. Come to me and let me know what you want, like the children of Israel. If our God knows our sorrows, we may be sure that these sorrows are well ordered. He knows that he will come through this door, he will meet you. When he comes through this door, because every sorrow has been ordered. He's not a God of confusion. He knows our sorrows are ordered. Therefore, just focus on him. Tell him, I am waiting for you and you alone. If our Lord knows our sorrows, we will be sure that he will help us in due time. And that although he seems to tarry long, he only tarries for our good. The Lord is working on our faith, on our patience. Patience is a fruit of the spirit. He's working on our patience, on our faith, because he knows he wants you to be a testimony to somebody somewhere. That's why he has tarried for our good. Lesson number three, it is the lesson of instruction. Lesson of instruction. If God who is love 
and power, knows our sorrows, and permits them. He, he, permits, he gives them permission to come into our lives. He does not willingly afflict. He must mean something by them. There is a voice in them we should listen to. Let us ask, and what does my heavenly father mean by this affliction? Why am I going through this? Friends, if you choose to complain and to mama, you lose it. But just ask the Lord, why are you, what are you teaching me through these afflictions? The children of Israel, many of them died in the wilderness because of murmuring and complaining. But those who looked unto the snake, friends, they made it to the promised land. Choose your words. Are you complaining? Are you murmuring? God does not answer questions. He only answers prayers. Your tongue is full of questions, murmuring and complaining. But he's saying this morning, change your language. I don't answer questions. I answer prayers. And that's why people say that the disciple to Jesus show us how to pray. Not how to complain. Not how to murmur. But they told, told him, show, teach us how to do what? To pray. The Lord answers prayers. By afflicting us, our Father means not only to correct our shortcomings, but to purify our faith. Purify. Yes, we have faith, but it must be purified. Purified day after the day. Day after the day. Month after the month. He wants to purify our faith so that we can see him in eternal glory. God tries our patience by sorrow for the example of others. How does the sight of a Christian sufferer cheer and strengthen his fellow travelers on the Christian course? Let us take care that our time of suffering, we glorify God by doing what? By being calm. Calmness. Yes, whatever you're going through, watch out your words. Be calm because the Lord is coming. He might come. You open your mouth, you're still complaining, then he takes off. Please be calm. We glorify our God through calmness. We glorify our God through confidence that doesn't matter what I am going through. I'll still wait upon you. Job said that through his slay me, I will still praise him. We glorify God through patience. Yes, I've been this thing for so long, but the Lord is saying, I am coming. Keep on waiting for me. I know, but keep on waiting for me. And finally, through thankfulness. Let your mouth be full of thanksgiving. No matter what you are going through. One thing that I know, that my God, my God, will never leave me, nor forsake me. Not only may our suffering affliction be a blessing to others as an example, but as calling forth their sympathy and love. What you are going through is because of somebody else. Because when you stand firm, Somebody will say, I want that God of so-and-so. He saw her or he saw him through. What God knew where they were. Even today, God knows where you are. He knows the situation that you are. He knows what you are going through. He didn't go to look for them. No, he knew they were in Egypt. Even today, God knows you are in Kenya. You are in Nairobi. You are in Zimmerman. You are at Shiloh. When he comes, at Apote and Gia, Look at the prodigal son. When he came back to his senses, the one who had employed him, he knew where he came from, and he went back to his father. Friends, keep hope alive. God knows your sorrows, and he knows what you want. What I want is not what you want, because we, are, we have needs as different as our names. Maybe what I want now, me, I want a... Um, Nataka ndege. Na sina mali ya kuiweka. Sizi pake kuangu. Sindiyo? Shida yako, uu nataka nini? Usiniambie, uu nataka nini? Uu nataka jet. Una, kujenga. Uu nataka kujenga. Una, God knows us. Because he knows that we have different needs as different as our names. Mimi ni kiomba hivi, wewe unaomba hivi. Because we are all different. But he's saying, I know your sorrows. He knew what they were going through even before they told him. They had a place in his heart because he called them my people. Therefore, you had to have a place in the heart of God. Let us look at three things to remember and then we call it a day. Three things to remember. The first one, 
is that God has seen the affliction of the Israelites. The word is seen. Bwana ameona. Bwana ameona. Hata wewe, Bwana ameona what you are going through. It seems as that it seems to them as though they were not seen by anyone. God sees all. Proverbs 15, verse number 3. The Bible says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. In every place. Is your place there? Yes. In every place, he behold the evil and the good. Psalms 94 Verse number 9. Psalms 94, verse number 9. He that planted the ear. Umesikia iyo. He did what? Do you have a ear? Where is your ear? Yes. He that plant, planted the ear. Shall he not hear? See you here. He that formed the eye. Do you have an eye? Where is your eye? Yes. Shall he not see if he can plant and imagine when I read I said, Hey God, you are full of humor. You planted. Wait to mini kupanda mbegu, sindio. Lakini ya kapanda nini? Sikio. Nakapanda nini? Sasa nini ngino na hitaji. Suko na mudomo. If you can hear, you can see, then you can do what? You can talk. He does not lose sight of his people. He does not forget about his people. He does not become neglectful of his people. Rather, the Lord our God never leaves us or forsakes us. Hebrews 13 verse number 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye, ye have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In that distress, in that slavery, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. In this life, the afflictions of the righteous may indeed be many. Psalm 34, verse number 19. Psalm 34, verse number 19. Many, not few, but many are the afflictions of the... Are you righteous? Funga Mukanda. Funga Mukanda. This is a journey. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them. He delivereth, delivereth him out of them all. Not out of some, but out of them all. When he comes, he's going to deliver you out of them all. Psalms 33, verse number 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Do you fear the Lord? The eye of the Lord is upon you. Upon them that hope in his mercy. Do you hope upon his mercy? Then this scripture is yours. He had heard their cry. Number one, he had seen. Now number two, he had heard their cry. The word here is heard. Alisikia. The Israelites had begun to entreat for mercy. And notwithstanding their ignorance, wickedness, and adultery, the Lord was pleased to hear. No matter what they had done, just because they were called by his name, the Lord had them. Not only does the Lord our God see the affliction of his people, but he also hears the cry by reason of their taskmasters. That body has brought you down. That marriage is as if it is in turmoil. That relationship is as if it is ending. But the Lord is saying, just because you are called by my name, I will hear you. Not because you are good, not because you are righteous, but because you are called by my name. I will hear you. Who are your taskmasters this morning? When you look at your life, who are your taskmasters? The Bible says in Psalms 34, verse number 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and he, he, his ears are open unto their cry. His ears are open. He just wants you to hear. He wants to hear what you are telling him. If you can speak, the Lord is ready to hear. He knew their sorrows. Not only he saw and heard, but he knew. Three things the Lord saw, the Lord heard, and the Lord knew. Much better than men could, but he pitied their misery. Yes, 
God sees the affliction and hears the cry of his creatures who are suffering. Do not forget this when you are in sorrow, that God hears and God saw. And he said, I know their sorrows. God understands your sorrows. He sees the falling tear and whispers this, I am with you. So sorrow not, not fear not. Sorrow not and fear not because I am with you. God sees your broken heart. God knows all about those things that disturb you today. God knows the weariness that you feel. God knows your fear of the future. That you look at yourself and say, me, me. how will my future be? Don't worry about your future. Worry about the one who holds your future. Because he's saying your future will be bright. There's not a single thing that God does not know about you. We may not know, but God knows what you are going through. And that's why we brought you to this house this morning to encourage you that in this journey, you only need me. Nothing else, you only need me. There is something about tears that touches our hearts. When you see somebody cry, you tend, like us ladies, when you begin to cry, I also start crying. I don't know what you are crying about. In the process, I will know what you are crying about. There's something about tears that touches our hearts. Just as someone's tears touches you, what about our God? What about our God in heaven? When he sees your tears, I know your sorrows. I, no one can say that I, as he says it, is not your father, not your mother, not your spouse, not your friend, but he says, I, I is your God. I is your redeemer. I is your savior. I is your healer. He says, I know your sorrows. It is I alone in the universe who knows your sorrows. It is I who made the sorrow so that I can purify your faith. It is I who made you. It is I who can balance the burden and the strength because he needs you. It is I to whom all ears are open and no secrets are disclosed. Sometimes we want to rush the process. But the real joy is in the journey. Let's walk the journey. Let's walk the journey. Let's not rush through the, through the process. Let's walk the journey. The Lord said, I have in fact seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. It seems the Lord was in a conversation with the angels and told the angels, wait. I have seen. I have heard the affliction, and the cry of my people in Egypt. And I know what they are going through. Today, the heavens, the Lord has interjected the heavens. He says, I have heard and I have seen the afflictions of my children in Zimmerman, Shiloh campus, and I know what they are going through. The Lord has seen your affliction and knows who you are. And this morning, I want to open this altar. You know what you are going through. That you cannot share with anybody. You cannot even share with a pastor. You cannot share with a, with a ministry team member. It is only you and God. And this altar is open for you to bring yourself. For you to let the Lord know. And he knows what you are going through. Just tell him, Father, hear me and see me. And you know what I am going through. And it's going to make a way. So don't wait for any, anybody to call you. It is you who knows. It is you who knows your, what you are going through. The altars are open. Bring yourself to the altar as a living sacrifice. Because the Lord wants to hear.